everybody? Oh, you can do better than that. How you doing? All right, do you mind if I go up here? Okay, cool, I'm gonna go up here anyway. All right, very good. Well, first of all, let's put our hands together for Alan. Come on, what a champion. Champion, man. You are a champion, bro. And look at Dapper, too, with no socks, man. I like it, I like it. That's right, that's right. Very cool, very cool. And also, uh, Pastor Dan, where did he go? Where did he go? Let's get, Dane, excuse me, Pastor Dane. Let's give it up for him. No disrespect, but you remind me of Gilligan from Gilligan's Island. Very cool. All the young people are like, why? Who's Gilligan? You know what I mean? So, uh, this is the Perseverance Conference, right? What's that? The skipper, all right. I don't remember there being a black skipper on that show. But that's okay, I'll remember that. <laughs> so this is the Perseverance Conference. And, uh, and the, the, the main goal is to, to keep persevering through whatever you gotta do. Like for me, uh, I'm persevering even right now because uh, half of y'all are asleep right now. So I want everybody to stand up. Just stand up real quick. Now the whole office smells like a buttery forest fire. And you know, the company I work for, they were all about customer service. But let's be honest, some of these customers don't deserve it. You know what I mean? You get that call, thank you for calling. Oh, hi, Mrs. Johnson. No, 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 please calm down. No, please don't yell at me. No, we'll get a truck right, please, don't, don't yell at me. Hey, you better calm down and you're not gonna get a delivery. What's my name? Javier Rodriguez. Right, right? That place is set up like a ghetto casino, right? A32. B64. Oh, bingo, yes! But see, it's way better than how it used to be. It used to be some angry woman who had like vinegar for breakfast, right? Number 38, gosh dang it, I said 38. Oh, that's me, too late, 39. What? And I know that when people work together in the office, you know, some people have to step out for their little cigarette or coffee break. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to say that when they come back in, they should at least brush their teeth. You know those people, hi, man, how are you? Oh, I need gum? No, you need to gargle with some gasoline, bro. Back off, I can smell your colon, come on. Yeah, man, you guys know what I'm talking about. And it's great when people bring donuts to the office. That's great. But then you open a box and there's a thumbprint and a bear claw. Because you always got that thing. I don't know. I don't want half. Hey, wash your nasty hands, please. And you know, there's rules in an office. You know what I mean? Like where I worked, we had two bathrooms. You know, there's one all the way at the end of the building. That's where you take your number two. But you always got that lazy person who does it in the front one by the fax machine, right? Hey, Mel, can you grab that fax? Sure. Oh. Come on, man, who didn't burn a match? So they laid me off. Surprise, surprise, right? But that turned everything around. Because after I got laid off, I said, you know what, I'm going at this full time. I have been doing comedy uh, starting, hey, uh, Tuesday, November 1st, it'll be 21 years now. Because wow. right. my career has arrived in Ontario. <laughs> but you know, I started this company, as he mentioned, Laughing to Success Entertainment. And what we do is we take clean comedy out into the communities. And it's great, man, because we do a lot of church events, we do fundraisers, we even do funerals. And I'm telling you, we be killing them, boy. We be killing them. Great. We do school assemblies. I have a whole team. And we go in and we do school assemblies. It's, it's myself, another comedian, uh, a juggler, a magician, and our DJ. And we get these kids cracking up, but we're teaching them how to be leaders the whole time. And I got to tell you, the uh, elementary kids are adorable. The high school kids are mature. And the junior high kids are children of Satan. <laughs> Last week they're like, we want to see Kevin Hart. Yeah, well, Kevin Hart don't want to see you. How about that? Yeah, I just pull up to the table and eat. Even my GPS is frustrated. In 200 feet, turn right on Foothill Boulevard. Oh no, Del Taco again? Quiet, Siri, you be quiet, what? 
Now, if you guys watch NCIS or Lip Sync Battle, you know what I mean? You can tell that LL is actually starting to gain some weight. Now he's starting to look like me. Just a matter of time before you turn on the TV and there he is selling a sandwich, right? If you've been waiting in the baking for lunch all day, five dollars in your pocket make it Subway. What? <laughs> authorize that. And you know, usually at every comedy show, I have to apologize to my fellow black people. There's only about four in here right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way I sound. Uh, I'm not representing black people very well. You know what I mean? Like most black dudes got that deep voice. Yeah, I'm cool, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? Not me, I'm more like Steve Urkel up here. <laughs> Did I do that? That ain't very attractive, you know what I mean? And all the comedians, they tease me. They say that I am a white guy trapped in a black man's body. But it's not my fault, I grew up in the 80s listening to K-Rock, okay? You know what I mean? When you close your eyes and you fall asleep, sleep, sleep. Clap your hands, doo doo. Doo doo. Come on. You tell me that you want me. Clap your hands. You tell me that you need me. You tell me that you love me. And I know that I'm right, cause I'm stalking you at night. I sound Caucasian as you see. It ain't my fault that I can read. You know what I'm saying? It's not, man. 